Halfland, an ahistorical prehistory. The Battle of the Meadow Rib. In the year 94 of the Common Reckoning, the halfling hero Brocco Proudnose was killed at the Battle of Spruce Wood. His place at the head of the halfling army was taken by a halfling named Flubbo Fluffy Chin. Up to that point, Flubbo had not done anything that particularly distinguished him from any other slightly rotund halfling, of which there were plenty. But at the Battle of Sprucewood, it was he who led the charge of the spear halflings that drove back the elven longbows, and thus in some measure avenged the death of Brocco Proudnose. His fellow halflings acclaimed him for this feat of leadership, and, enjoying this attention, he was happy to accept and even believe their assessment of his qualities. One thing led to another, and within 24 hours of his act of reckless bravery, he found himself in command. Like many halflings of his generation, Flubbo greatly admired Brocco Proudnose. This admiration was only magnified by Brocco's death, by which he came to be widely regarded as a martyr for the halfling cause. Flubbo took the blood-stained shirt that Brocco had been wearing when he met his end, and had it mounted on a pole, so that the halfling army could march behind it as a banner. He believed that the spirit of Brocco, embodied by his shirt, would bring the halflings good fortune and success. He did not seem to consider that the shirt had not brought much luck to Brocco. To be fair to Flubbo, he was not alone in missing this point. As news of the death of Brocco Proudnose spread, many more halflings flocked to Flubbo's banner seeking to avenge their hero. But most of these were farmers, armed only with homemade shields and spears, not the archers and slingers, which had been the source of much of the halfling's previous martial success. Three days after the Battle of Sprucewood, 600 halflings marched into the elven forest. In front of the main body, were 150 slingers, divided into three groups. Behind them marched Flubbo and his banner, at the head of a column of some 400 spear halflings. The rear of this column was protected by 50 archers, a group of 25 on each flank. On the day after entering the woodlands, the halflings came to a far-flung southern outcrop of the hills of the Weald Rise, rising imposingly out of the forest. This was the ridge the elves knew as the Meadow Rib. A few patches of woodland clung to its flanks, but the crest was bare of trees, instead being carpeted by grasses and wild flowers. Flubbo decided that marching along the crest of the ridge would make for easier going than forcing a way through the tangled forest, and that on its heights the army might find a suitable defensive position to camp that night. The elven leader was Lafaralin Silverblade. Following the Battle of Sprucewood, he had fallen back into the forest, regathered his forces, and sought new recruits. His force now numbered some 350 elves. Although the halflings did not know it, the elves had been following their every move. Seeing the halflings mounting the meadow rib, Lafaralin Silverblade disposed his troops for an ambush. The elves flitted lightly through the trees and up the slopes of the ridge, taking up positions in advance of the halfling column. At the far end of the ridge from the halflings, behind and concealed by its final summit, Lafaralin placed himself 
and a hundred and twenty-five elves of his guard, clad in mail and bearing shields and swords. Some way further along the ridge, he placed one hundred mailed longbow elves, concealed in a copse on the left flank of the advancing halflings. His remaining troops were unarmoured elven archers with light bows, most of whom had joined him in the last few days, and these he placed yet further along the ridge, a group on each side, again concealed in patches of woodland. Unaware of what awaited them, the halflings marched along the ridge. The elves bided their time, waiting until the halfling column had completely passed both groups of light elven archers. And then elven arrows whistled out of the woods, and the halfling archers to the right rear of the halfling column had ceased to exist. Flubbo reacted by ordering one hundred of the halfling slingers in front of him back down the right flank of the column to deal with this threat. The slingers formed a line as they advanced, and soon Slingshot was flying between the trees. Some of this Slingshot hit the elven archers, who, to avoid further casualties, fell back into the woodland. But now the halfling left was also under attack, as both groups of elven archers on that flank announced their presence by loosing arrows into the halfling column. Halfling spearmen started to fall. The remaining slingers and the archers on the halfling left turned to meet this new threat, launching slingshot and arrows back at the elves, and Flubbo ordered the column to push forward, trying to get out of harm's way. The front ranks of the column advanced, but, in the confusion, the rear ranks were left behind. The archery duel on the halfling left did not last long. The remaining halfling archers were quickly pierced by elven arrows, and the elven light archers emerged from the woods, switching their target to the spear halflings. Meanwhile, at the head of the halfling column, halfling slingers were being skewered by arrows launched from elven longbows. Indeed, the range of the elven longbow meant that even the slingers on the right of the halfling column found themselves being targeted. They responded to this by moving down the slopes of the ridge, interposing its crest between them and the longbows. Thus sheltered, they moved to the back of the column, to a position where they could hurl slingshot at the elven light archers to the left rear of the halflings. An exchange of slingshot and arrows resulted, with damage inflicted by both. And now, Lafaral in Silverblade and his guard appeared, charging along the ridge toward Flubbo Fluffychin and the head of the halfling column. Flubbo had won his position by an act of aggression. Charging the enemy had worked for him before, and he expected it to work for him again. He led the spear halflings immediately behind him in an advance toward the charging elven guard and he ordered the rear group of spear halflings to charge down the slopes of the ridge to their left, into the trees concealing the longbow elves. The elven longbows loosed a storm of arrows at the spear halflings charging them. Undeterred, the spear halflings were successful in closing with their adversaries, but elven mail resisted halfling spears, and the halflings had the worst of the melee. The front rank of halflings suffered horrendous casualties, and the elves advanced over halfling bodies out of the trees to close with those halflings who remained. On the halfling right, the light elven archers who had opened the battle now re-emerged from the woodland, intent on finishing off the remaining halfling slingers. They were not successful. The halfling slingers turned to face them, and completed the job that they had previously commenced. The slingers then turned back and advanced toward the elven archers on the halfling left, who were shooting arrows at those spear halflings now fleeing from the swords of the elven longbows. The slingers succeeded in downing some of those archers, 
although not without suffering losses of their own. And in any case, these little halfling successes were not sufficient to save them. Lafaralin's onrushing guard charged along the ridge and crashed headlong into Flubbo, his banner, and the spear halflings behind him. The banner bearer fell, surrounded by a maelstrom of flashing elven swords, and the banner was trampled into the blood stained flowers by elven boots. Although Flubbo and the spear halflings behind him were dismayed by this, still they held their ground. But when Flubbo in turn was cut down, the spear halflings wavered, and as the elven guard assaulted the spear halflings in the front ranks, those in the rear ranks broke and ran. The elven guard brutally slew those halflings who stood and fought, and then set out in pursuit of the remainder, hacking at their backs as they fled. And now the halfling rout became general, throwing away their weapons, shields, and anything else that might slow their progress. The few surviving halflings, beset by blind panic, sprinted from the field. It is said that of the 600 halflings who entered the battle, fewer than 100 survived it. Thus ended the Battle of the Meadow Rib. <laughs>